welcome. This is Dr. Vidya Rahman. She is the Director of Preoperative Anesthesia, the Senior Director of Faculty Mentoring and Clinical Guidelines Management at Nationwide Children's. And she's also a member of the board for the Society of Pediatric Anesthesia. Thank you for joining me today. And for those of us who may not know you very well, can you please give me a brief description about yourself? Yeah, thank you, Allison, for inviting me. It's a great honor to be here. Uh, I'm, I've am i been a pediatric anesthesiologist for about almost 20 years. I uh, am, as Allison mentioned, um, been at Nationwide for 15 years and uh, am the senior faculty mentoring and uh, manage, uh, clinical guidelines management director. And it's a great pleasure to be here and uh, chat with you. As an outsider looking in, um, you've had a lot of challenges in your career path. You've had to come up um, uh, cultural, gender, race differences. Do you think these cultural, gender, race differences have affected your career? And what advice would you give to people who may be experiencing some of this, these um, challenges? Yeah, I mean, I, I was told something important, which I think was good and bad when we were told that. Um, one was you shouldn't regard it. Mm -hmm. You got to be the best you can, regardless of your race, gender, even though you will face it's real. Mm -hmm. And you do face those challenges and people will dislike you just because of things that you can't change. Right. So and there's implicit bias everywhere. Um, but you but for your own success, I don't think you can you can use that as an excuse. And it's hard not to be a little embittered by it, um, I think. But, you know, in anesthesia, we're, I mean, PED anesthesia is better than regular anesthesia, but we're still a male-dominated field. We are still, and especially um, when you look at, you know, point, you know, like uh, outcome measures such as who's in leadership, who gets full professor, Women as a gender, I, I focus on just the gender. I, I don't even look at the other stuff because I think first difference is male and female. There should be no difference. Whether, you know, the second, other things I think are secondary, honestly. I think, you know, the female difference is huge. I mean, only 20% are full professors. Only 20% become, uh, you know, chairs or what, you know, and deans and and of medical school and why is that when we're over 50 percent women represent over 50 percent of uh, current medical school graduates and so that I think is m the important part to focus on you may make more headway in getting that answered than m maybe some of the other stuff which is more you know just starting to come up and people are realizing it yeah it is a real issue I think the your objective endpoint is going to determine your success, not the fact that you are gen what gender you are. It's going to be harder to achieve that, but I think it's, you know, like I'm the first full professor, clinical professor in OSU and, and nationwide. And, and that's not because I was given it. I have this qualification. It was because I objectively went after it and that's what I was felt important. And, and 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 went for it. So, you know that that I think is very important to um, go for your goals and not think about the other, <laughs> you know, issues which are real. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying that you can't say that some of these, um, you know, these people, women who have ended up being leaders in Ranori, you know, the dean of Wharton, the dean of Kellogg, they're all women who've done really great in the business schools and. It's not because that they're female, they hired them. It's not because they they are at the top of their field. Mm -hmm. And so they just happen to be women, you know. So mm -hmm. I think that's what you have to say. They happen to be, you know, whatever. But what did they achieve? Is That's important. Mm -hmm. um, how and do you think as a, as a group of anesthesiologists or and um, anesthesia leaders can do to foster this growth of women or, and I doubt more inclusive uh, workforce? I think you have to give opportunity. I mean, you, you just definitely, I mean, you know, this 
I will tell you though, it's it's when you when you look at like for me in my department, when I look at junior people, the male men are more aggressive. You know, they're asking you for opportunity. They're asking, whereas the women are not. They're sitting back. They're silent. Try to support women. Try to go move forward. I really, really try hard. I really, you know, like I. But I'll tell you, it's you know, even for myself, who's very pro. It's easier when somebody who wants to do it, you know, and and guys want to succeed. They want. They have more ambition, and they're very open about it. And so. It's, it's easier to support someone who wants to get ahead, right? Some women have this thought that they have to have 100% of the qualifications uh, or, I guess, as you mentioned, not as risk takers as men. And how can we encourage women to apply for these positions or pursue uh, certain um, ventures, even if they're not 100% qualified or, you know, risk averse? I think, I think you just have to, I mean, that, that comes with mindset and maybe understanding what you're saying. It's like that, you know, imposter syndrome and, and alluding to that and, and, and those kind of things and educating them on, you know, being more confident. I mean, you know, unfortunately, you know, there's all this, there's so many barriers being a successful woman. I mean, I'll tell you the likability factor is, you know, inverse relationship to your success. The, and people are more jealous when you're, you know, and they, they call you the B word when you're, you know, saying things. And so there's like a lot of things you have to surmount. I mean, I will tell you there's all this chatter and there's all this like petty mean girl kind of stuff that goes on. And, um, it's hard. It's hard to really focus on what is important and know who, what is your North Star and do it and, 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 and encourage people to focus on what do they want to get achieved. And if they want that, they have to try. And, it, you know, I, I'll tell you recently, I've applied for really high positions and, um, and not gotten him. And, and I'm okay with it in a way because, you know, how do I know? I don't even know if I don't try. And I, I mean, I would love to have had feedback. And that's the other thing that's hard is you will not get feedback on all this. Nobody gives you feedback. And so that's what I'm saying. How, how do you know what the gaps are? So you have to wait. The only way you figure it out is by, you know, like, okay, who got it? And and maybe, maybe I can see their CV or their qualifications and see what I'm missing. Or maybe it's, it may not even be that exciting. It might be just like, okay, they wanted them for something that I can't control, you know, like, you know, uh, and so, you know, you just have to see, and, and sometimes you're like, okay, I, there was no competition. I, there's no way I even mm-hmm. another, but, you know, I think that's where I feel like I am given at least I've gotten in a lot of places, at least first interview, at, you know, certain things. And to me, that's great. And if I can advance to the second interview next, you know, the next step is even better. It's hard to be patient and sometimes, you know, see. And and I think sometimes as you keep um, trying, even if you're not qualified or, or you may not have 100%, just the failure also teaches you a lot because, A, you go through this interview with, big people. I mean, these are CEOs and CFOs and stuff that are interviewing you. So you learn what is entailed in this kind of, you know, interview. That's important. Um, B, it builds up confidence too. Cause I, I mean, I can go and talk with anybody, right. Cause I've been talking to these <laughs> big wigs. And so um, that it builds up the confidence for you. I mean, yes, you didn't get this position, but you were able to hold your own and, you know, you, you can debrief after, you know, for yourself, like, oh, okay, I, I did this well, I didn't do this well, maybe I need to read up more on this. And, you know, I learned something, okay, I didn't know this during this, maybe I have to figure out what this is and, and stuff. So that helps you also grow. And, um, and it's disappointing when you don't, you know, make it to the next level or whatever, but you have to, like I said, you have to keep moving forward can't look backwards so when you apply for these kind of things even if you're not 100% qualified 
they kind of know that you've thrown your hat in the ring and you've shown your CV to somebody. So these, your name becomes known. Mm -hmm. So you've done, you know, even though you didn't get that position, people are aware that you're there. Mm -hmm. So Thank I think you. that's important. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that is something that um, has not been brought up. It's not openly brought up. No, it's not. I mean, uh, that's what I mean. And I think people need to realize that you're not, let me tell you, you should not, you should apply for jobs that you think, even if you're not qualified, because what it does is you don't want to apply at that point for a job that you really want and then learn all these things that you didn't, you didn't answer or not know. Mm -hmm. So you should apply for these jobs that are not hundred percent interested or maybe you're not hundred percent qualified or you don't know, but it's good to get that practice in. Mm -hmm. And it's good to put your name out there so that people know who you are. And especially if you're not as familiar with certain um, groups and, um, and people start knowing, Oh, she's out there. She's interested mm -hmm. so that um, you don't want to do it too much and go to be someone who does, you know, just goes around interviewing. Um, but you want to say, Hey, I have interests. I really want to go somewhere. Think about me. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep me in your mind because you never know, they may come back to you and ask, like, you know, later. Mm -hmm. So that's that's important. Even though your timing may not be right or their timing may not be right, you never know when, mm -hmm. you know, these things can can happen. Right. Also, I think something you mentioned, the the feedback that you get, because it's so hard to get feedback. Um, yeah, especially it. when, as you climb higher up in uh, leadership positions, I think it's harder and harder to get feedback. So I think, um, that this is a another way to get feedback. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. This is another way to get feedback, but let me tell you, they, they are not going to, like, you can ask them. I have not gotten any feedback. I have not gotten any. <laughs> but you do get feedback because in in a inadvertent way, right? It's not yeah. During the interview, your subjective thinking of what they're thinking, you know, yeah. You think, and some things you think, oh, I did fantastic. And then, uh, you know, uh, but I think, you know, so, but um, yeah, I mean, that's all that you can say is, and you can see how you, wait a minute, I didn't quite answer that question or I, maybe I should read up on this because I didn't know and you didn't know something was coming up. Brought up. Um, so it, it's, um, and it's very important to be up on things that are important. You know, like, you know, what are the things that are driving the conversations today? Wellness, uh, women empowerment, uh, you know, these inequalities and inequities and health disparity. You know, you need to know those kind of topics and and be able to articulate some thoughts on it because you will be asked those things mm -hmm. um so that's important too so you should know what's what's in the know <laughs> mm -hmm. you know right. i know political minefields are there but you should be aware of you know general framework what's happening in the world and and you know economic issues and in things because they you know they want someone who is who knows some stuff and you know you have to be able to be articulate and 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 be aware because they want someone to you know these are leadership positions that you need to guide into the future so right thank you for highlighting this important aspect mm -hmm. uh, of career development thank you for your time and for your valuable advice it's been great talking to you and a lot yeah. of fun. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Allison. Thank you for thinking of me. It's great.